Oh, it's about that time, guys. Three times a week, if this is your first time to this channel, we upload videos. Twice, I edit the crap out of them. Once, we do it uncut. So we're gonna talk about three things today. Two of them, you guys sent me comments to, to explain about and I'm loving doing it this way because it allows me to, well, it allows me to exercise my brain and I'll talk about anything. And I'll exercise my brain, is that what I said or no? <laughs> I'll, I'll research, if I don't know about something, I'll do some research so that I can learn about it a little bit more and have some kind of idea what I'm talking about. But. I will talk about literally anything, so I appreciate you guys sending me ideas on what to talk about on these Cusco's Uncut. And uh, the, the first thing we're going to talk about, well, is going to be about this phone that I'm filming on right now, which I usually don't do. But the second thing we're going to talk about is how I got started with music and explore that history just a little bit. That was a request. And the third thing is we're going to talk about the idea that uh, some people have that reptiles don't love you or that reptiles aren't capable of loving you like mammals are, and we're gonna to touch on that as well. So, first thing, iPhone. I'm recording on an iPhone right now, and I, I don't usually do this. I remember I did that video a little while back where we recorded on the phone and compared it with my other camera, and I was filming earlier. I was riding around here on my one wheel with the family around this high school, and you see that clip right there? It looks freaking fantastic, and I was like, this is a pretty decent looking clip right here. And the other thing is this iPhone has three cameras. I don't know which one to look at. <laughs> but I was, so here's the thing. I'm going to Utah soon uh, with Dave Kaufman and Clint's Reptiles to go around there. And I'm thinking that I might just try for the first time ever, handicap myself is what I would consider it, and, and bring the phone only to record whatever vlogs I do out there. Just definitely lighten up my load while we're tripping around Utah, going from Salt Lake City down to St. George and whatever else we're doing. I'm just along for the ride. I have no idea exactly what the plan is. I'm just gonna go for it. And I learned this other new technique, I turn off one of the microphones on this camera so there's only one microphone and picking up what I'm imagining is much better sound. There's, there's wind blowing around here right, right now and hopefully it's not picking that up. Um, hopefully it's not like bu buzzing all over the microphone. I'm thinking this technique works. So leave a comment down below if you think that you would be able to deal with this type of quality. Now the wind is blowing pretty good. So I'm curious if it's picking it up. Uh, but if you guys would be happy with this, this type of quality for vlogs in Utah, because I would love to just bring this phone and no other cameras. Okay, second thing, the music. I've been playing music since I was, well, I mean, if you count ba banging on stuff, then I've been playing on it since I could first remember but I really first actually started playing like when I was four I remember banging on my mom's guitar so my mom played music and my dad played music too actually they both played in like high school band my mom played piano we had a piano in the house and when I was seven years old I started taking piano lessons and I went to a teacher's house there in Livermore uh, Miss Hagen fantastic lady just a great lady and she would obviously teach me piano <laughs> we'd have a lesson once a week I'd go practice I'd learn songs I'd go play recitals at her church, so I'd learn a song over the course of time and go perform it for people. And that was my first music stuff. And then when we started playing music in uh, elementary school, I do remember, I, I guess I, I have had a bit of a knack for it. You know, it wasn't, you, obviously this stuff takes practice. People always say, oh, you're just naturally gifted, you have to play. No, it's just, it takes practice. Like you have to work hard as hell if you want to get good at playing music. Like that, when I was learning to play guitar, I locked myself in my room for like a year and a half straight. And my friends were like, you, we ever gonna see you again? I'm like, yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but so uh, horn instruments and band, like I played clarinet when I was in fourth, oh, sorry, uh, violin in fourth grade and clarinet in fifth grade. And I actually got to use one of the school instruments because they do these little tests, like sound tests, like test your ear and see if you can tell the difference between these two notes and do this random testing to see who will get the school instruments because the school only had a certain amount of school instruments. And if you didn't pass this test or whatever, then you'd have to maybe go rent one from the music store to participate. But luckily I was good enough and got to participate for free and uh, did that. And then next year, middle school, I, I really wanted to play the bassoon, at least in my mind, the bassoon. They, they offered, it has a list of instruments and one of them said baritone. And in my mind, baritone meant bassoon. And you know, I'm 11 years old. And I was like, well, get the instrument. <laughs> it is nothing like a bassoon. It's a baritone or a euphonium. Basically, it's like a small tuba. And they brought it out and I was like, I thought I was going to get a baritone. And they're like, this is a baritone. I was like, oh, shit. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> but 
I was like, they, they were like, well, just try it out. If you don't like it, you can always switch. And so I was like, all right, all right I'll, I'll try it out. I ended up sticking with it all the way through middle school, all the way through high school. I used to get picked every year to go to the state honor band, which is like they pick one kid from the school to go and play as the honor band. I'm to totally tooting my own horn here, L literally and figuratively. I was tooting horns, and it got me got me to go in places. I, I would win, like, w awards at the school, the Bud Kane Music Award I remember I got. So um, I had a knack for it. I did work hard at it. I liked I enjoyed it. It's easy. When you enjoy something, like, as those of you that do stuff like this probably know, it's not the same as work like you do work hard you put in lots of time effort hours but it's so enjoyable so it's easy to do it's not like a like a thing where i don't know it's not like a, just a, a grind you know even though you can call it a grind you can definitely call it a grind but it's not so much a grind when you're having so much fun doing what you're doing and it was halfway through high school i started picking up rock instruments like, like guitar I bought a drum set off one of my buddies um for 420 dollars that drum set Man, I banged the crap out of the thing in my parents' garage. Very thankful for my folks for putting up with... Well, my folks have always been very supportive of, of whatever I've been into for the most part. Um, even some of the crazier ideas. But, yeah, music, definitely big support there. Um, in fact, my first electric guitar... I, I learned to play on guitar on, on my mom's. It was this old guitar. You had to, like, lift weights with your fingers to fret. I learned Metallica riffs. And I think the very first riff I learned was, like, a bass line to a 311 song. But... I wanted to get an electric guitar so bad, and my dad rented me a guitar for a month, said if I learned how to play a Joe Satriani song, those of you guys who know Joe Satriani, you know it's no joke, he said if I learned Joe Satriani song on that rental guitar, he would buy me an electric guitar. So I busted my ass learning how to play Surfing with the Alien on that rental electric guitar, and he, true to his word, he bought me a, a, this nice Hamer, this red Hamer uh, electric guitar, and just... The rest is history. I mean, well, not the rest is history. In eight, when I was 18, I went to music school down in uh, Hollywood and met dudes from Hawaii that played, met people from all over the world. That school brought people from, like, I had friends from Sweden and Japan and South America and Africa. And, like, ooh, here comes the wind for real this time. Um, and ended up meeting my bandmates that I played with for a decade, you know, touring around and playing shows. I met those guys at that school. Even though it was actually later after the fact. We, all, we were all at that school. Funny enough, uh, none of us graduated because the school. <laughs> and I came back, I had like this, a pretty decent job and a girlfriend and I had an apartment and I was like, pretty happy little gig. And they actually tracked me down in the phone book through my grandmother. They looked up my grandmother's phone no number in the phone book and they're like, dude, you gotta come play with us. We're gonna start a band, we're gonna tour. I was like, damn. I don't know about that. And I talked to my boss and I was like, he's like, I was like, yeah, I'm thinking about it. Cause I had a pretty good thing going on there. And, and he was like, my boss is super cool. He was like, we'd go rock out at my parents' house sometimes on lunch and like jam and play music for like two hour lunches. <laughs> and he was like, what are you thinking about it? And I was like, no, you're fired. You need to go and try that out. I was like, all right, all right. So anyway that's the music thing now you guys heard plenty of that you probably wondered about this reptile brain stuff so there are three parts to our brain and you probably heard of people refer to this if you haven't before there there's three parts to the brain and people will refer to that that um primitive part what's considered the primitive part because it's the first part that formed over the course of evolution or whatever the hell you believe in i don't care um lizard brain they refer to it as it's the uh it's the it's like the, uh, oh my gosh, the cerebellum and like the the brain spine, not the brain spine, the spinal cord. Oh my God, I'm forgetting this stuff already. Um, brain stem and the cerebellum. It's like the part of the brain that's responsible for like basically being able to function like on autopilot kind of and also like uh, fight or flight response. So like survival, that's that part of that brain. Like, they call it lizard reptile brain because that's the part of the brain the reptile still has. It's the lizard brain. They've got that, the brainstem and the cerebellum. And then you've got uh, the limbic system, which is like kind of like mammal brain. And it has things for like memory and, and like attachment. And I guess you could say love and, and, and affection and those type of feelings, those evolve into mammal brain. And reptiles don't have that. And then you move into the bigger part of the brain, even the neocortex, what us humans have. And it's responsible for like being able to reason and imagine and abstract thinking and all that stuff. So... That's how it works brain-wise. So when people are saying that your snake doesn't love you and your snake can't love you, well, scientifically speaking, they are 100% correct because the reptiles just don't have that part of their brain with which to have those type of emotions. And let alone reasoning and thinking, they don't even have the mammal brain that allows you to have affection and, and connection and attachment to things. Now, 
some of you are like probably i know there's a lot of people out there that really love the reptiles and do believe the reptiles love them even though you scientifically aren't correct right now here's the thing about really good scientists really good scientists know that they don't know it all and that we're discovering new things all the time that's why when they have these hypotheses and they prove them out to become theories when they prove their hypotheses they don't say okay that's it that's the fact they call they still call it a theory even if you've proven something out in science they they call it a theory because r good scientists know that there's always new things being discovered and if we think we're learning it all and we think we know it all we're damn wrong no scientist in his that can call himself a, a true honest to god scientist will, will always will not be steadfast and firm in anything because they know there's so much more out there to be discovered and my point of saying that is I do believe that if you treat something with enough love, there are vibrations out there that our brains may not be able to pick up yet, things that we're not able to see. I mean, you can definitely teach a reptile to, see, I don't want to say appreciate because that might not be scientifically correct. However, you really can get a, an animal to, to know you and be used to you and, and you know, I, I'm not going to completely naysay it because nobody knows for sure yet. Current science says no, it can't happen. But I would hate to kill some kid's dream and say your reptile doesn't love you. It, and some people are cold and hard. And I can be like that sometimes too. Like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Come on. They, they got reptile brain. They don't love you. But do you want to wreck that kid's dreams? I mean, what kind of asshole are you? I think that if you want to love your reptile and you think your reptile loves you, I don't think you're hurting anything in this world. Honestly, you're probably making it a better place if you can treat something with love and, and expect or and, and absorb whatever you consider to be love from something else and it makes your life better and it makes the world a better place, you're winning. You're doing it right, okay? Don't let science get in the way of, of love. I feel like that was good.